Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai, India. Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to discuss purpellar sepsis which in the past was one of the most dreaded complications of vaginal delivery but not anymore thanks to potent antibiotics. In this first part I will discuss the definition and causes of purpellar pyrexia and general aspects of purpellar sepsis. In the second part I will talk about the diagnosis and management of purpellar sepsis. I will start with a question. What is doctor's plague? In the bygone era, purpellar sepsis was called doctor's plague. Before discussing purpellar sepsis, I will talk in brief about the definition and differential diagnosis of purpellar fever because the presenting symptom in most cases of sepsis is fever and the other causes of purpellar pyrexia must be ruled out first. Purpellar pyrexia is defined as a temperature rise above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit that is 38 degrees Celsius maintained over 24 hours or recurring during day 1 to 10 day of childbirth or abortion. It can also be defined as oral temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit that is 38 degrees Celsius or more on any two of the first 10 days postpartum. Like I mentioned about the 6 B's of the management of normal puerperium, these are the 7 W's of causes of childbirth fever. Wind, water, womb, wound, walking, weaning and wonder drugs. This diagram from my textbook Modern Obstetrics illustrates how from the postpartum day that the fever starts, one can decipher the cause. If it arises on the first day after delivery, it is because of pneumonia. If the fever comes on day 2, it is because of pyelonephritis. Fever on the third day is because of endometritis. Fever on day 4 or 5 could be because of wound infection. Fever arising on day 5 or 6 could be because of septic pelvic thrombophlebitis or pelvic abscess. There are two more W's not shown here. They are fever arising on postpartum day 7 to 21 is because of mastitis or breast abscess. Drug induced fever can occur at any time. Common drugs that can cause fever are alpha methyl dopa and nifedipine. Another important cause in a tropical country like India is malaria which can occur at any time. I will now discuss in great details the main topic that is purpural sepsis. Purpural sepsis is defined as any bacterial infection of the genital tract which occurs as a complication of delivery or abortion usually within 10 days up to 42 days after delivery. It can also be defined as infection of the genital tract at any time between the onset of rupture of membranes or labor and the 42nd day following delivery or abortion, in which any two or more of the following signs or symptoms are present. Fever greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 38 degrees Celsius. Abnormal foul smelling vaginal discharge. Lower abdominal pain or subinvolated uterus which is tender. One cannot proceed further with this topic without mentioning Ignaz Philipp Semmelweis, an Austrian obstetrician. In the medical sciences, clean and safe surgery could not have been possible without Ignaz Semmelweis from Vienna observing in the 1840s that washing hands between examining women in labor decrease the frequency of puerperal fever. For more details of his great contribution to medical fraternity, please read my textbook Modern Obstetrics. In Modern Obstetrics, there has been a marked decline in the incidence of puerperal sepsis. Currently, it affects 2-10% to of normal deliveries. 
the reasons are given here. In contrast to this, the number of cases of puerperal infection that we see after cesarean deliveries has risen significantly. The risk of infection is 5 to 10 times higher following cesarean deliveries than normal deliveries. The primary site of infection is obviously the uterus, that is the endometrium. After that, the infection can spread via the parametrium to the fallopian tubes and ovaries, which are the secondary sites, and then it can enter the bloodstream, giving rise to tertiary site infection, that is septicemia. There are three grades of severity of puerperal sepsis. When the infection is limited to the uterus, that is only endomyometritis, it is called as grade 1 infection. When it spreads via the parametrium and affects the fallopian tubes and ovaries, it is called grade 2 infection. When it spreads further to the pelvic cellular tissue, that is pelvic cellulitis, and later the bloodstream, that is septicemia, it is referred to as grade 3 puerperal sepsis. The severity of infection depends on the virulence of the invading organism, number of bacteria and host resistance. Puerperal sepsis can be caused by both aerobic as well as anaerobic organisms. The infection like pelvic inflammatory disease is very often mixed. This is because of colonization of the genital tract by both types of organisms. Common aerobic organisms which can cause puerperal sepsis are E. coli, beta hemolytic streptococci, non hemolytic streptococci, staphylococci, klebsiella, proteus, pseudomonas, and gonococci. Remember, mycobacterium tuberculosis, if present earlier, can flare up after delivery. The anaerobic organisms which can cause puerperal sepsis are anaerobic streptococci. Bacteroides fragilis, Bacteroides melaninogenicus, Clostridium belchii, Clostridium tetani, Mycoplasma, and Chlamydia. During pregnancy, the high risk factors responsible for puerperal sepsis are low socioeconomic status, inadequate nutrition, anemia, obesity, lack of antenatal care, and coitus during late pregnancy. The high risk factors during labor are frequent vaginal examinations that is greater than 3, premature rupture of membranes, prolonged labor, chorioamnonitis, and prolonged intrauterine fetal monitoring. The high risk factors during delivery are caesarean delivery, operative vaginal delivery such as forceps or vacuum, and revitalization of tissue from episiotomy and hemorrhage. There are three modes of puerperal sepsis. When the infection occurs due to organisms present in the vagina and cervix which become pathogenic in the presence of revitalized tissues, it is called as endogenous infection. When the infection occurs from bacteria from other parts of the body such as skin boils, sore throat, and tooth infection, it is called as autogenous infection. Exogenous infection is when it is introduced from the outside from unclean hands, unsterile instruments, foreign substances, and sexual activity. The complications following puerperal sepsis can be divided into immediate and delayed. The immediate complications are pelvic or generalized peritonitis septicemia, shock, abscesses which can be pelvic, subphrenic or subhepatic, septic pelvic thrombophobitis, and death from gas gangrene, tetanus or septicemia. Delayed complications are secondary infertility, chronic tubovarian abscess or mass, ectopic pregnancy, and intestinal obstruction following adhesions. This is the end of part 1 of my e-lecture on pupil sepsis. Please watch part 2 which deals with 
the diagnosis and management of puerperal sepsis. The link to which is given below. For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology, refer to following books written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers Clinical Cases in Gynecology Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery Don't forget to subscribe to my new channel called Modern OBGYN.